Alright guys, hey, uh, we're going to try something new today. I'm using a different camera because I am I have oriented my phone to uh, have the screen point toward the mirror and the forward facing camera, the uh, or the rear facing camera is pointing at me and it is a higher resolution camera um, and it also has macro functions and so if I want to bring and show you we've got some much better resolution it looks like and if I uh, you know want to put my fingers up there to make it focus better then I think we may like this result now one negative is that uh, I can't really see the framing and so if I'm not exactly center in the frame uh, I don't really know it because the clamp that holds my phone is, is blocking part of the screen. It's actually harder to press the start and stop, you know, button. So that is a negative about this particular uh, method. But hey, let's give it a try and we'll see what happens. Uh, so we are going to be bringing three new things to you guys. And I'll be trying three new things. And, but the, the stuff that is... The stuff that you have seen before is we've got Dark Fall. And this is the Icarus base from Declaration Grooming. And we've got the razor I've been using a lot lately, the car of Christopher Bradley. This is the Open Comb Double A. Now I've used uh, about half a dozen or less different blades with this razor. It's a very mild setting, but I'm actually not finding it to be a mild experience. And this is really funny. It all, in my memory, I really believe the A open comb and the B open comb were smoother than this. I'm really curious what's going on. Now, uh, Darkfall. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of Darkfall. Um, and I picked a Declaration Grooming Soap today that has uh, like some moisturizers and things like that. I actually wanted to get milk steak because... One of the surprises that I'm bringing you guys, one of the new things, well, one of the things I just learned is sometimes I need to pause to cough or to uh, do my um, rinsing, things like that. Now, <laughs> And so it's a lot harder because that clamp is kind of in the way. Um, what's also going on is the numbers, uh, they're counting backwards. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing them in mirror format. And so when I want to add 30 seconds and when I load for a certain 30 seconds, I'm going to have to do some eye trickery to uh, to make sure that I get the numbers right. Um, <clears throat> so um, I wanted to actually use milk steak because one of the new things I'm bringing to you guys is a, a brush load, a heavy brush load on the soap. And then we're going to work that in as a face lather, kind of along the style of a lot of these guys on YouTube who are not me. They're not focused on watering it down as much as I like to have it watered down. They are uh, just painting on some really thick stuff. Now, the people who come closest to how I might like it will then start working water into it and eventually get to kind of something close to a good place. But um, anyway, heavy loading, kind of a dry experience at first. Um, and we're going to try it out. Why not? It's very different than how I usually go. So this is an atypical lather for me, for sure. Um, and I bet, I bet that kind of loading is going to be better suited for one of these lathers one of these soap bases that's focused on giving good post-shave, uh, moisturizing, you know, that sort of thing. And so I, but then I discovered, you know, here at this location, it seems like this is where I have most of my Icarus soaps and my bison based soaps and all of my milk steak soaps, which this is Icarus. Uh, all of my milk steak soaps are at the other place. And so I, I wasn't able to actually have milk steak right now, but man, I like Dark Fall so much, it'll be good. Something else new we're going to be bringing to the shave is we're going to put a feather blade in this 
car of Christopher Bradley. Uh, then we're also going to, the third final new thing is this new brush. Uh, ben at uh, House of Mammoth uh, uh, sold me this brush and what an awesome guy he is to take care of it and uh, and the destiny of the brush might lie with me, right? He, uh, he, had, to, he had to move it on and man, the blue coloring here is just fantastic. Now, is it going to focus? Let's see if I, uh, there we go. See, we might as well use the, if we're going to have all the negative issues with uh, this camera, we might as well use the positive issues. Now it's the Select Badger. And this is the PK-47. I assume the PK-47 is the handle. And indeed, this is a comfy handle, but it's quite small. Um, Coronado, if you were able to read that. Coronado, Conorado, Con Conorado is the word under there. And I guess, is that the color? I'm not really sure. Um, Conora Indigo Conorado is kind of the name here. Uh, indigo obviously refers to the color. I don't know if Conorado is a, um, a another modifier of the color or what. I'm going to get him back in the water. Now that's interesting. I use the him pronoun. Do we, do I always call shaving stuff by the masculine pronoun? I bet I do. Never really thought about it. We think of cars and boats and guns as hers. But I think most of my razors, I, I might use a masculine pronoun, the brushes and all that. Now, I did do, this brush does have a little bit of moisture from earlier today when I used Williams to really give it a work over, clean up the brush, um, and also just to get the tips wet and see how they feel on my face, almost like a test lather. Now, this, uh, as you can see, doesn't have too many uses. Probably looking at five or six uses on this feather. So, with many blades, that's a really sweet spot for the feather because the, the kind of coarseness has been worn off and it's uh, smoothed out just a little bit. It's easier for me to look at the lens because I don't see the screen as easily. And so that might deliver a more personal experience. When I look at the screen, when it's using the selfie camera, it always looks like I'm looking to the side of the uh, camera, you know, for you guys, from you guys' perspective. All right, so we have the feather locked in. Now, I love putting a feather blade in a mild razor. In theory, this should be a mild razor, even though it's an open comb, but and most of the blades I've been putting in this guy is, it's, it's, it's kind of putting it more like a, a medium aggression, a medium amount of blade feel, uh, to me at least. Maybe a little bit below that, like 4 out of 10. Definitely not near the bottom where I might think it might be. And, and sure, yeah, it's light years more aggressive than the AA solid bar. But normally I do think like the A open comb was just one step more aggressive than the A solid bar. This is interesting. Yeah, I don't quite know what's going on with that. Uh, we'll just dribble water on the brush as we need to. I do have my lather bowl standing by. Um, maybe if I get a lot of overflow lather, I'll just store it in there instead of letting it drop down the drain. All right. And this hasn't been used in a while, so uh, we're going to just load a ton of soap on the brush. Kind of, um, I've been watching some of these guys online, and so let's just make the brush look like it does with them, right? So I pull it out of the water, and they usually maybe give it a shake or something like that. Um, let's give it one more. I think this holds kind of a good bit of water. And you can take a look at the tips right now. See, we've got a little bit of gel there. And it felt pretty good on the face. It didn't feel like a bunch of sponges on my face, and so that's good. Uh, maybe just the right amount of gel, perhaps? We'll see. Okay, so let's just uh, kind of start loading. I can't see the clock 
unless I move the so we'll just have to if I'm really interested in looking at loading time I'll just have to watch the video back again you know a lot of guys just uh, whip up a lather by loading just a ton for a long time I um, used to have a PK47 brush I'm pretty sure the PK47 refers to the handle shape and it's really very comfortable very ergonomic it's quite short though it's a short handle so if you're uh, if you're a face latherer then you're probably not gonna find it too short if you do lather in a kind of a big bowl then your fingertips may get tired of getting all up in the suds ah uh, we're starting to get a little thicker now because I want I want it to look like I'm overloading so let's keep on going we need something very pasty and, and one of my thoughts is and what I've seen other guys do is they'll take this super pasty brush and they'll go to their face with it and just keep working this overly dry paste on their face back and forth all over for a while before they start adding any water to it Now this is a good bit of loading, of course, but we're making a point. Oh, okay, I see on the front side there we are starting to kind of overflow. Okay, so this particular soap base, at least with the amount of water I brought into it, is not really getting pasty. Maybe I brought too much water. I mean, I did shake it out a few times. So, I mean, I think this should kind of give us the the hope and effect I was going for so let me put this down and um, wash off this pausing the video is much more hey there um, when I am lathering up um, uh, no I I was distracted I realized that I I'm pushing the stop button and so I'm going to end up with a video I'm going to have to splice together um, because I, the stop button is the only one I can really see. The, the pause recording button is, is a smaller button and I can't, I can't find it and press it. It's in the corner. So there's a little strategic issue right there. Anyway, I lost my train of thought, so let's just keep on going. Uh, let me get my face wet. Should have done that earlier. Two, two days of growth is what we're looking at. Usually I let my face be wet while I'm working up my lather, but right now is the time to actually put my lather on since it's a face lather. So next time before the loading begins, I really, if I'm gonna do a face, I should, should do that. So um, here we have this brush that possibly has six or seven passes of lather in it. Um, so let's kind of start. And now I've seen my share of guys. They start with the painting motions and a really good scrub. See, and, and they don't drip. And so I bet, I bet I came at this with a lot more water than those guys do. And uh, in that case, that might have prevented me from picking up as much soap. So I had a PK-47 brush before, but I just decided the handle was too short. Yeah, see, look at this. You saw all that loading I did. And I just don't have a ton of soap right here. What we'll do here is, I'm not really accomplishing my goal, because as you can see, this is not a, a pasty lather at all. This is actually kind of nice. We are giving the brush a good, a good test. The uh, tips are nice and soft. 
These were crispy and curly when dry. And boy, the brush definitely had a good bit of backbone when dry. And uh, it actually does have uh, quite a bit of backbone now. But I guess the tips are giving me enough softness and just enough splay where maybe I don't, don't mind it too much. We'll see. Okay, now look, we're starting to get a little more pasty now. So, we'll just kind of keep on going. Like when I feel like I should add some water, I won't. I mean, those guys like to do the up and down motion on this on the part of their face there and then it's really hard to do that same motion over here so I get, maybe if I switch to that right there you know those painting strokes can really change the texture of your lather introduce less air into it yeah see there we go the lather starting to dry out you can see how creamy and how creamy it's getting I think I need to take this extra, put it in the bowl, and rinse off the handle. These small handles are really tough to kind of keep a hold of sometimes when they get lather on them. So by, by painting and working in the really dry stuff, I was just curious if I would experience something different other than just a dry lather. Would, would the lather somehow transform the pastiness? We're definitely getting kind of dry right now. And guys online will just kind of crank that dry stuff for a while before they start adding more water. And just for the record, I don't believe that such a, a lather with that much opacity, with that much thickness, I don't believe it protects as much as something that's really slick and watery and and by, by saying that, I'm also saying that I believe that a, a lather that's properly hydrated is more slick. And uh, really wet, in my book, is properly hydrated. So yeah, see, I still, it's starting to dry up and get kind of pasty a little bit. Man, that, oh, this handle is just such a chore to hold on to and when it gets soapy. It's just so slippery. It's gorgeous, though. Man, that blue is just, you know what let's do? Let's um, go back to this puck here. Yeah, those online guys, don't they just kind of get the puck and just kind of go after it? And uh, I've measured how much soap I use and with somebody like Sterling or Chiseled Face. I was using 0.4 or 0.5 grams per shave, whereas a lot of my face lathering, overloading by my perspective, of course, compatriots use 1.5 to 3 grams of product per shave. Okay, so there we go. Now we're kind of got a, a dry experience on my face here. And I, this is not really enjoyable. I mean, it really is. I'm just kind of spreading dry stuff on my on my face. But 
but that's the point. Yeah, okay, good. You see the lines there? Do you see the, the textures? Do you see the definition in the lines? That's what you get when you're overloading. Ah, look down here. Do you see there? We, that's because we pushed a layer of lather on there. Then we came back with another stroke and pushed another layer down there. And that, that kind of definition is something that you never see with my, uh, my wet lathers. Um, I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong. I'm just trying to help you guys identify things. And who knows, maybe I'm about to learn something about the lather. I'm not really enjoying this part. And so a lot of guys uh, say that they want to experience the tips of their brush on their face. And so they want to be a face latherer and they don't want a bowl lather because then you're, the bowl is getting all the face, all the goodness of the brush, right? Well, that's sound logic. However, I also make sure that I really work my lather in instead of just painting it on even when I bowl lather. So yeah, you see the you see the texture of the soap the lather here. I mean, this is what some guys consider to be good. And the good thing about shaving is that you can do that if you want. It's all subjective. And then they um, kind of work it in for a little while. I don't really know what to look for in terms of when to stop because this has kind of felt thick and pasty for quite a while now. So why don't we uh, start working in some water. Clean off the brush handle again. I could definitely, I feel a little itchiness on my face, and so I could uh, definitely see how this kind of practice would make you more susceptible to the uh, oils and uh, fragrance oils and other things, ingredients that are a part of the soap. Whereas when you're really hydrated you, and I use less product, then there's less of an impact on my face. And so um, any potential irritants are, are more diluted with my type of arrangement. All right. Uh, so, what do we do? We will take this little cup right here. And I've filled it full of water. And what I'm going to do is just kind of dip the tips of my brush in it. And just kind of start working that water in. Like those guys like to do. And hopefully we see some good changes now because we are talking about overloading if I were to really add enough water to my own standards then I would just keep making lather and I'd have to scoop chunks of it off and put it in the bowl do another dip in the water there So I'm not going to try to hydrate it at this point to my own standards. I just want to kind of watch and see what it transforms into, if anything. Now, you know, if you like that opaque lather look, and I've been corresponding with someone who does just happen to like that really thick lather look, that's a part of how he enjoys the hobby, well, then that's fine. Go back in for some more water. And then this kind of person who uses this method is going to have their own definition of when it's hydrated enough.
you know, honestly, I've probably already taken it wetter than they like it. But look at that. You've got a nice sheen on that clod right there. This almost feels like it takes longer than my my own bowl lathering. Of course, remember, it's possible I may be just doing it poorly. All right, let's just say that this is where we want to stop. All right. I picked the wrong brush for this experiment. I'm getting all the handle all wet. My hands are already kind of fatigued trying to hold on to that handle in the slippery conditions. Um, but I chose it because of the knot. The knot is a um, it's select badger, but it's 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 obviously it's got a big band of of of, of dark color, and so it looks like it's from an area of the badger that's similar to the finest badger bristles. Um, it's got nice soft tips. So I thought that might be a good thing. It's got density and so those elements are common to a lot of the big popular brushes right now. The handle however is uh, maybe the weak point at least for me right now. So let's look at my face. It definitely is creamy. It definitely um, it's not cakey anymore. So let's just give this guy a, a shave and see what happens. See how the feather works in here too. And on two days of growth, I am expecting it to kind of protest a little bit. And you see this, this is dryness. The lather is so dry, it's kind of leaving these faint trails. I don't get that with my normal lather method. Now, I did end up working the lather for quite some time on my skin, so even though I consider the lather to be kind of dry, I believe that the protective products may have had a chance to kind of work their way into my skin and offer me a, a decent level of protection. Sure, if I were able to hydrate it to my own preferences, I believe I'd get the ultimate in protection. And there we go. So that wasn't too bad. The feather did a good job. Okay. Get a good rinse here. I'm trying to press that button. All right, going again. I uh, did not have a lot of excess lather. I had a little bit that I scraped into the bowl, but really not that much. So we'll just have to see what I'm left with after we kind of spread this stuff. Maybe I didn't load enough. Let's dip back into the water and. See if we can kind of bring some more lather up out of this brush. I don't think I am. Wow. All that loading. And that was ended up to be one pass of lather. Let's get this stuff from the bowl. definitely going to do a normal bowl lather with this brush and that'll give me the more typical sense of how I'm going to enjoy the knot. Ben did say that this particular knot code was desirable and 
this brush is a limited edition I'm in the process of trying to find out in what way you know is it desirable did it end up to be a good a combination of you know tips and hair density that people just discovered that they really enjoyed you know is that why it's desirable so we'll see the uh, you know paladin of course has a knot code page where all the if you know the knot code from for your brush it's able to tell you some of the bristle characteristics but i believe this one was in this section where it said basically we got this kind of hair from thus and such date to thus and everybody had dis different characteristics and so they there's not really any help well i think i was able to thanks to the lather that i had kind of put aside i'm able to actually put together something decent here i don't think i've got anything for the third pass the razor's razor is moving pretty well and this lather is actually wetter than my first one and so it's actually the razor's moving pretty pretty much better than the first pass. Well, Icarus is a nice base. I do like Bison a little better. I think I like Icarus better than Milk State. Got a pretty good shave. Two passes. Let's see what we can do with this brush here. So go back to the puck. Let's get a little bit of water in the in the brush. I kind of feel like I'm abusing the soap, using this much. I mean, you know, each to his own. As if we hadn't worked the face enough today. Here we have to kind of start the process all over again, but I'm just trying to get it to a workable place. See, it's not taking too long. That should be good. Good enough. Well, using this method, you're definitely not going to have the problem where I sometimes find myself, which is overwatering the lather. It's going to be pretty hard to do with this system. Now, did anything magical happen with the lather? I don't think so. I don't think there's any uh, there are any epiphanies to be had. I think that if I had all this to do over again or if I was you know had to face lather and there were no bowls left in the world. I would, I would not do the big load, and I would, uh, yeah, it feels good. I would just kind of load enough, I take a nice kind of wet brush and just load enough soap to, to have a brush load of lather. I think that's what my goal would be. Well, I must say that I did not experience uh, something new in that lather that uh, 
that was something I would try to search for that I feel like I'm missing with my bow lathering technique. Um, there, there, were, there was just kind of an overworking on my face. The pastiness uh, kind of kept me from really experiencing the brush uh, because of just the thickness of the lather. Um, the uh, yeah, I, I very much was missing. The, the lather that I would work up in a bowl and just as long as I didn't overwater it, I, I would really um, enjoy that, putting on that um, and working that into my face. So uh, now the razor did move reasonably well on that first pass and then even better on the second pass. So in terms of razor function, looks like uh, it's, a, it's a good method. My face feels... reactive it it feels like it's been kind of worked over um, I think just because of the sheer concentration of soap that was used um, I think I would probably find more soaps that might cause me problems with this type of method where my uh, my really wet lather with a bowl is is able to dilute those um, perhaps irritative chemicals to where they don't bother me at all because I, I react to very few things, and uh, I don't know whether it's just kind of the excessive work with the brush. Um, you know, in the beginning, there's kind of a bit of drag with the brush, and that's uh, when it's really thick. Um, and that is something that might have given me a little bit of brush burn. You know, definitely wasn't an enjoyable sensation. Um, again, let me remind you that. Uh, just because I may have some negative feedback on this type of technique, it could be because I did not do the technique very well. And so I'm not going to say face lathering is bad. I'm just saying that this particular type of face lathering that I did today was, was not very enjoyable in general. Um, it's serviceable, but I wouldn't really want to repeat it. And my face is kind of wishing that it hadn't done it in a small degree. Let's whip out some, some balm here. Uh, does mountain man go with dark fall? Well, in name, it seems like, you know, mountains and dark fall is very kind of woodsy and leaves and undergrowth and burned things and all that. So let's just see if they agree a little bit. Silver mountain water from Creed is the cologne this is based off of. Let's see if this will help my skin to feel a little better after that. I wonder if there are guys out there who think they have sensitive skin or dry skin because they do this kind of shave. They end up using a lot of product on their face and so it, it acts on their face causing irritation. And that irritation they interpret as dryness, because it's kind of similar to how it feels. Um, when in fact, if they switch to a wetter lather, it would take away that whole experience. It would take away the whole negative reaction to the, to the soap and to the lather. All right. Well, hopefully that does some good. Now, the scent's really quite different. The soap. Oh, the burned woodiness here, the murkiness. Man, that's so good. Is there some common ground with the mountain man? There's a little bit. You know, there's like an amber note in there or something like amber. Uh, tonka, amber, vanilla. It's not an overt vanilla. And that part is agreeing with this soap. So that's interesting. So that there is a little bit of complementary nature between this soap and this balm. All right. Well, that was an adventure, and I don't plan on repeating that. Um, all right. Every time I press that button, I have to lean my head over to this side and try to put my finger in the right place because I can't see it. Um, so.
So this was an adventure in many respects, a, a different technique that uh, my face is not really enjoying very much, just with some light irritation um, with the new camera angle. <laughs> but sure, it was great to be able to show you things, um, but that was really the only, only plus. Um, this is a dense little knot. I've towel stropped it now, and you can kind of see with the um, appearance of it how you know some of the tips are still kind of gelled. And uh, with this, with such a thick pasty lather, I I was robbed of the feel of the brush. Um, that that thickness it, it it hid the experience of the brush. Um, and so those, if you're a face lather and you use that kind of thickness, then that whole, I have a brush that I want to make sure that I enjoy because I paid a lot of money for it. Uh, may not hold too much water if you use such a pasty lather like, like that. Um, at least in my view. Just my opinion, that's all. So, um, look forward to using this guy again. Paladin Conorado Indigo. K47. He's a little guy, small handle, but uh, I, I think I'm going to like the brush knot once I get it in a better lather. And uh, I think the feathers worked well. Looking forward to trying the feather again in the AA open comb carve. Um, it uh, we try it again uh, with shaving down two passes, two days of growth. It's, of course, a non-standard kind of situation, so I'm not going to judge it on that. I do feel that the past two and three were fairly comfortable. So that's good. That'll probably carry over into the next, uh, another kind of lather. Um, so I think that'll be a good blade, perhaps, to use with this uh, base plate. So there we go. Um, I was surprised by some family members outside my door here, even though it's really late. And so I'm a little, uh, I'm really tired, but I'm a little off my uh, rhythm here. I believe I've covered everything. You guys uh, take care. Um, we'll patch this video together and send it out. And uh, I hope it helps you guys. This is Sugar Day Shaves. Good night.